Well, regarding your first question, also we have announced our stances uh, proportionate to the basic policies of ours for the uh, restoration of peace and tranquility and adoption of peaceful ways and means. Uh, we have uh, announced our stances, and uh, then Egyptian officials have also made their comments, so I, I don't think there's any more explanation. We just uh, pr preserved our own right to reflect their opinions, and they did so. Well, yesterday, the United States, you said yesterday? Yes. Uh, another aviation company of the Islamic Republic of Iran was added, the U.S. added it to the uh, sanctions list for charges of buying uh, passenger planes uh, engines. And then uh, a few weeks ago, we just heard that uh, another 19 people and companies in Iran were added to that list. Of course, Mr. Uh, former Mr. Zarif said that uh, these people, individuals and companies were added to the previous sanctions list, and it was nothing new. But if uh, this list is going to be, uh, the previous list is going to some more people that are going to be added, then this, this, this kind of is on, in contravention with the atmosphere prevailing in the, uh, the negotiations. So what, what's our reaction going to be? And if this goes on, what will happen? <clears throat> well, in, in your question, you also announced part of the stances, right? Well, uh, about the news that you just mentioned, we've also received that uh, following uh, uh, reception of more information. We're, we're seeking uh, more information regarding this, also regarding the Turkish uh, company. If we have some complementary information, we'll start investigating it and see if what you said, how far. Uh, uh, how accurate uh, that is, and if uh, the news is verified, then we'll announce our stance. Please go ahead. From Khorasan newspaper, uh, this morning, Mr. Jack Straw, the head of a parliamentary delegation, uh, arrived in Tehran. Given the uh, what happened on the sidelines during the European uh, uh, Commission. Uh, visit. You said that the foreign minister is in charge of uh, regulating these things. So, uh, what about if you could tell us also about this agenda for this meeting? And is is, is there going to be any uh, unofficial meetings also uh, that the uh, foreign ministry or the establishment will not uh, verify? Well, based on uh, uh, the plan and uh, on the basis of the invitation between I Iran, Britain, Parla uh, friendship uh, parliamentary group, a delegation uh, from the UK has arrived, uh, arrived in Tehran last night. The meetings at parliamentary levels and the foreign ministry uh, level meetings will be held. Now, parliamentary relations actually are complementary to official meetings between the governments, no doubt about that. We. I want to see that uh, at the same uh, level, uh, proportionately at various levels, uh, parliamentary uh, relations between Iran and other countries will um, also go on and also further uh, strengthened. Then uh, that's naturally we will see the parliamentary delegations, meetings and visits, and we believe that uh, these uh, uh, visits will uh, pave the way for cooperation between Iran and uh, other uh, countries and other parties that will. So within the same uh, context, that we favor uh, such parliamentary uh, delegations visits. So uh, parts of some media, uh, this is uh, what, what is their preoccupation about an unofficial meeting. So during the uh, visits that the, the uh, British delegation will have, the visits will be with the uh, foreign minister, deputy foreign minister, Mr. Purjerdi, uh, also head of the F uh, Foreign Commission and National Security of the Iranian Parliament, also will have a press conference uh, that is also planned. So uh, in the meeting, uh, this will uh, hopefully lead to a better understanding uh, and more appropriate understanding of both countries of each other. We hope this will lead to that, and then hopefully uh, uh, those issues that you just uh, mentioned uh, will not uh, see any signs of those, and hopefully uh, they are the preoccupations that uh, uh, that are the part of the media, and that's why uh, we have also uh, let the uh, visiting delegation know about this. Uh, well, uh, there's an ambiguity regarding the Geneva, too, if it is going to be 
official or on the sideline or if it's not the level of a uh, minister if uh, is this going to be uh, that Iran is going to take part will Iran accept this and Geneva too without Iran what kind of prospect will it have I mean Iran uh, will nearly Iran is a key player in the issue and uh, what about our uh, diplomat in, uh, in, in Yemen? What's happened to him? What's the result of the delegation's visit? <coughs> well, regarding um, uh, our kidnapped uh, diplomat in, uh, in Yemen, uh, Mr. Nekbah, uh, we're following the issue at the political level with Yemeni officials talks within the uh, foreign ministers and also uh, calling the Yemeni's uh, charge d'affaires to the foreign ministry. Uh, also, we have done that. Now, uh, we have also stressed that uh, Yemen's government is accountable for uh, protecting the life of the Iran diplomat. We have stressed this, and we have also let the Yemeni's officials uh, make sure they know about it. And the second uh, uh, Iranian delegation uh, headed for Yemen last week, uh, there is this technical uh, team uh, that will be pursuing the case so that uh, they would take their time and uh, probe the issue more closely. So we anticipate that uh, uh, they will be staying in Yemen for more than two, three weeks uh, to be able to make uh, whatever investigation is necessary on the ground. So based on the information at hand, the Iran diplomat is in good health, and uh, we're hopeful that the results of the uh, probe uh, will lead to his secure and uh, return home as soon as possible. Now, as for the Geneva II, uh, we've always asserted that without any precondition, when it comes to any p uh, political solution to the Syrian crisis, we, we are ready to take part. Well, various uh, regional countries, uh, a major uh, dignitaries uh, have stressed the role of Iran in the political solution to the problem. The meetings that our officials have had with uh, the regional uh, authorities uh, has been a kind of another kind of uh, highlighted issue, like Mr. Zarif's recent uh, visit to Turkey. This was also stressed on the Turkish officials' side uh, regarding Iran's role. So there is no doubt that Iran can help uh, resolve the Syrian crisis. but. At the same time, uh, setting of any preconditions or uh, any conditions that uh, would not uh, would be beno uh, beneath the dignity of the Islamic Republic is not the right thing to do. And like I announced, uh, any kind of proposal that would uh, actually question the dignity of the uh, of Iran or undermine it, we simply reject that. And if they just want to hold this meeting just just for the sake of holding it, it will just a political show. And there will not be ever a very tangible and useful uh, outcome out of it. <clears throat> Greetings um, from Parliament's news agency. Well, the U.S. Senate has announced that before February, <clears throat> a new resolution, a new anti-Iran resolution will go through the Senate that will lead to further sanctions. Also, the Congress said <clears throat> that uh, fresh sanctions will be imposed against Iran before February. Now, the position of new sanctions, how can it affect uh, the trend of uh, negotiations between Iran and P5 plus 1? <clears throat> well, this was announced in the Geneva meeting that the no new sanctions should be clubbed against Iran. So what's going to happen? <clears throat> well, regarding fresh sanctions, our stance is uh, clear. <clears throat> passing um, um, the, the placing of any new sanctions will, will uh, mean the termination of the ongoing negotiations. We have already announced this stance that such efforts uh, are in contravention of uh, confidence building and goodwill and uh, go against uh, the uh, present uh, trend of negotiation. This is a transparent and clear, clear cut of sense of ours. Any uh, measure within that context, if they are approved or passed, then that will be in contravention of the process of the negotiations, and they will make the negotiations fail. Go ahead, please. We have heard that the 
uh, Iran officials have been extended invitation to go to the Se Munich security meeting. Is this right? And who will be taking part? Well, the organizers of the Munich uh, security conference uh, uh, have extended invitation to the Islamic Republic of Iran. And, uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, studying the case. So we have come to this conclusion that uh, the our foreign minister uh, uh, is actually uh, considering this and regarding the to uh, take part. Uh, so we will uh, let you know about the time uh, for the visit. Well, there are contradictory reports uh, regarding the formation of this committees to supervise uh, the negotiating team. If you could uh, elucidate. Well, the foreign ministry has already announced that we have not heard of any such news or comments, but what's clear is the fact that uh, the, the nuclear negotiations, the nuclear negotiation case, <clears throat> those here, actually the United Nations Security uh, 